Hi folks, it's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. Uh, we're on part two of our study in Ephesians and we just had a bit of a break and it's good to be with you. So let's pray and uh, you can get me on Facebook, Twitter and my website jasonburnspreacher.com. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your love and for your grace and we pray that your people would be blessed by this study and that father you would fill me with your holy spirit and refresh us and encourage us through your word today in jesus name amen amen so it's good to be with you we we only got through a few verses and this is just one bible study for the evening so and it shows how rich uh, the word of God is so let's read again from 1 to 14 and then uh, start from uh, verse uh, 4 Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1 Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints who are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus grace be to you and peace from God our Father from the Lord Jesus Christ Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption of sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the prayers of the glory of his grace, through which he hath made us accepted in the Beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, in which he hath abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known uh, unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he had proposed in himself, that in the dispensation and the fullness of time he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the prayers of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the prayers of his glory. So amazing words there, uh, so much uh, of the riches of God's word. So just getting my notes ready. Okay, so it says in verse 4, According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, be holy without blame before him in love. So we've looked at that in depth. Then we go to verse 5. We read these words. Having predestined us unto the adoption of sons, by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will so here we have what is called the doctrine of adoption it says having predestinated us what does the word predestined mean well uh, chosen means before the beginning of time God chose you predestinated means uh, it, it's going to happen that God's already 
predetermined it. He's already put things in place where it will take place. So predestinated is kind of the action word for chosen. So having predestinated us unto the adoption of sons. And um, yeah, if we turn to Romans Uh, if you turn to Romans 8 verse 15 Romans 8 verse 15 Sorry, Romans 8 verse 15 So Romans 8 verse 15, it says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. You have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So I'll read that again, Romans 8 15. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So we've received the Holy Spirit and we've been adopted into God's family. Now, once you've been adopted, you have all the rights of, of, your, of the father, of the family. Um, you know, a child or a teenager or even a young person or even a person, they, they're a slave, they, they don't have any rights, they, they don't have any future, they don't have anything to look forward to. But then the master decides to adopt them. Once they're adopted, they become part of the family and they have the legal rights to the family inheritance. And your adoption can't be undone, it can't be broken up. Once you are adopted, you're adopted. Uh, and as you're adopted, you have the full rights of the family. So God has adopted you into his family. So that means you have the full rights of the heavenly realm of the Father. You're his son. It's an amazing thought, isn't it? Don't you think that's amazing? And that adoption can't be undone. Once you're adopted, you're adopted. And you have those full rights. That's what your position is today. Having predestined us unto adoption of sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. And it was just God's will that he wanted to adopt you and lavish upon you the family rights of heaven. I think that's, that's amazing, really. Um, the adoption is the Greek word uh, hothesia meaning placing as a son it's not much as a, a as a, as a word of relationship as a of position in regenerating a christian receives the nature of child of god in adoption he receives the position of a son of god every christian attains the place of a child and the right to be called a son the moment he believes and we've looked at a couple but we'll look at Galatians 3.25 Galatians 3.25 I just think this is amazing it, it, don't you think it's amazing Galatians 3.25 Galatians 3.25 is it Galatians 3.25 Let's read. But after faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For you are all the sons of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as have been baptized into Christ are put on Christ. So we are sons of, of, of God. We're sons of God by faith in Christ. For 
Joshua, you are all the sons. Galatians chapter 3 verse 26. For you are all the sons of God by faith in Christ Jesus. And then if we turn to uh, 1 John 5, 12. Oh, sorry. Um, 1 John 3, 1. 1 John 3, 1. 1 John 3, 1. One John three one. Behold what manner what manner one John three one. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the children of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the children of God. It doth not yet appear that we shall be, be but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. So we are children of God. We're adopted into God's family. I see what my notes. See if I've got any notes. Um, so like I said, you can't be undone in your adoption. You can't be undone in your adoption. Um, just think of uh, a Roman family, a, a wealthy master, and he has a slave, and that slave doesn't have any rights. One day, the master just out of pure love, lavishes upon that slave the right to be part of the family. And there, all the riches of the family, all the blessings of the family, are given to his son, are given to the adopted son. Um, I think if we turn to Romans 8, let's just read Romans 8. We get, a, we get a picture of this adoption and the wonder of this adoption in Romans 8. Romans chapter 1 and 2 is kind of shows you us that we're sinful, that we're all sinful. Romans chapter 3 talks our justification by faith, that we're, we're, we're grounded and declared right before God because of Christ. That's Ro that's Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 4 is saying this is no new idea. It came from Abraham. That's Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 5 is saying we are not in Adam anymore. We are in Christ. And because we're in Christ, there are blessings. Romans chapter 6 is saying that we've died in Christ. Romans chapter 7 is we're no longer under the power of the law. That's Romans chapter 7. And Romans chapter 8 is building on this fact that we're united to Christ and that we have the blessings in Christ. And, and so it, it's a crescendo, a blessing. Let's read Romans 8 because we get the riches of what it is to be adopted as God's son and daughters. Romans 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. So as children of God, we're not condemned anymore. We walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. As children of God, we're a people of the spirit now. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made us free from the law of sin and death. No longer sin and death and the law has hold on us. Verse 3, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh... God sending his own son in likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us we walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are of the spirit 
the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is at enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but, the, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So what he's saying here is, the law and sin no longer hold us down. Because we're in Christ, they have lost their power. We are now people of the Spirit. We've received the Spirit in Christ. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwelleth in you, and he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also give life to your mortal bodies by his Spirit dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. So he's saying, now that you're children of God, now that the Spirit of God's in you, we're to live in the Spirit and not in the flesh. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are, here it is, sons of God. We're sons of God. So to be adopted is is to receive the Spirit. That is part of the adoption. That is part of the riches of our Father. The Spirit himself, for you, you have not received the Spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the Spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So now we have been adopted, we can say that God is our Father. Just like a slave who's adopted and says, now I'm a son or a daughter. You're my father. We have that filial relationship. Verse 16. The Spirit himself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So now that we're adopted, the Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we have been adopted. The Spirit himself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, verse 17, 17, Romans 17, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So do you hear that? So because we've been adopted, he's saying we're heirs. We inherit the kingdom. We inherit the riches of heaven. We inherit the riches of the Holy Spirit. Verse 18, for I reckon that suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So because we've been adopted and the blessings that are coming our way, it doesn't matter what suffering we go through because the riches are unbelievably amazing that we're going to inherit. It's not the riches of gold and diamonds, but the riches of heaven. The, just what it was saying in verse 3 of Ephesians. You go back to Ephesians verse 3. It said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And that's what Paul's saying in Romans 8. For the earnest expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Wow. For the creation was made subject to vanity, not willing, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope, because the creation itself also shall be delivered from bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So, creation was subjected to this um, bondage because of man's sin. And, and creation didn't want it. But now, the children of God have been adopted into his family. Creation is... Is, is, is waiting, expecting the glorious liberty that it will bring upon creation, even through the sons of God. Because the creation itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travail in pain together until now, and not only, but ourselves also, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption that is the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? 
But if we hope for what we see not, then we do we then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise the Spirit also helpeth in in our infirmity, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So what he's saying is, he's saying that we've been adopted into the family, but there's more adoption to come, more um, blessings of our adoption. Our bodies are going to be fully redeemed, and the Spirit of God is in our hearts now, bearing witness and helping us to pray, helping us to intercede, helping us to go through the difficulties of this life uh, while we wait for our full adoption until we have our full body uh, rejuvenated and changed to the glorious heavenly body. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinated to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So all this salvation, this adoption, everything that's going around you, all the suffering, all the problems in the world, is nothing compared to this adoption, because everything is working towards the blessing of you in your adoption. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, whom he called, them he also justified, whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God has adopted you into his family, he's called you, he's justified you, he's predestinated you, it's all been done for you, and so everything is working in history for your blessing. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Shall, shall God that justifieth? Who is he that condemneth? Shall Christ that died, ye rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who maketh intercession for us? So even... Uh, Christ right now is interceding for us in our adoption. What's, what shall separate us from the love of Christ if we've been adopted? What can separate us from his love? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. You see, this love that has adopted us we're conquering. We, we will be conquerors. Nothing will separate us from that love. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creation shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our love. Nothing will separate us from our adoption. So verse 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So his good pleasure of his will, nothing will take you out of that adoption. Whatever goes on in your life, you are secure in his love. Six, to the prayers of the glory of this grace through which he has made us accepted in the beloved. So all this adoption... All this salvation is to the prayers of God. Verse 7, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Redemption has the idea when Moses uh, led the people out of Egypt and went across the, the Red Sea and uh, the people were saved from the attack of uh, Pharaoh and his army. And uh, the people were, God's people were redeemed. Okay? And so God has redeemed us. He saved us from wrath and the enemy of sin and the judgment of the law. We've been redeemed. We've been set free. And it was by his blood in whom we have redemption through his blood. It was the blood. It was Christ's blood. If you remember at the Passover, 
If you remember uh, the, the, the Jews when they were coming out of Egypt, they put the blood of the Lamb on the doorpost and it was the blood that set them free. In whom we have redemption through his blood. And this redemption, this, this blood that was shed on Calvary, brought forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. It was God's rich un, uh, unmerited favour given to us, grace unmerited favour given to us in which he abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence this was God's great wisdom this was God's great prudence that he would provide this salvation for you and me having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he had purposed in himself the mystery of his will the Bible talks quite a bit about mystery there's a number of mysteries one of the great mysteries is that God not only chose the Jews, he chose the Gentiles. That's what it's referring to. Verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and that which is on earth, even in him. This verse is not saying that everybody is going to get saved. It's saying that the plan of God his people will be brought together. That's what it's saying. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, in other words, God has um, various ways of revealing himself in history. Like he revealed himself through Adam and Eve. He revealed himself through Noah. He revealed himself through Abraham. He revealed himself uh, through the prophets and these are like dispensations and it says that in the dispensation of the fullness of time so the final period of history that in the dispensation of the fullness of time he might gather together all things in Christ which are in heaven and which are in earth even in him so the fullness of time there'll be a day of the fullness of time when uh, those who are saved will be brought all together. Those who have died and gone with the Lord and those who are alive will be brought together as one. Uh, verse 10. Together in all things in Christ. Again, in Christ, in Christ, the always in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him. Verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. So we're part of this great redemption. This great cosmic drama of God's people being saved in Christ. Those who have died will be brought together with those that are alive. And we have this inheritance too. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh things after the counsel of his own will. God's own will has worked this has moved this to his own glory and it's predestinated in other words it's worked out absolutely predetermined by God what's going to happen that he's going to save a people verse 12 that we should be to the prayers of his glory who first trusted in Christ so as we trusted in Christ as we looked to Christ and as we got saved we were predestinated it was already planned. It was already worked out. But it was to his counsel. It was to his glory. Verse 13. In whom you also trusted. Uh, salvation is trusted. Salvation is trusting Christ. Salvation is believing in Christ. In whom all your trust. In whom you also trusted. After you heard the word of truth. Salvation comes primarily through the word of truth through hearing the word of God it's so important when we're evangelizing when we're telling people about Jesus that we tell people about the word of God you, you heard the word of truth the gospel of our salvation the gospel the good news that we're to tell the gospel that Christ died and rose again that if they believe in him they will find salvation if you turn to Romans 10, let's turn to Romans 10.
Romans 10. Romans 10, 9. This is the gospel, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's the gospel, Romans 10, 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead,